What's up? Hi everyone. So today I thought we gotta do a part two. You guys had so many questions after my last video about lesbian sex and I feel like, yeah, I didn't cover everything that I could have because I didn't even realize you guys had all these questions. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, if you guys are not following my Instagram, go over there and follow me. I also took some screenshots from my actual video. Also, if you have not already seen that first video, I will be linking it right here so you guys can check it out. Watch this video and then head over there after. Let's get to the questions. Do you actually scissor? Because I don't, and I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if I said it in my last video. I personally, that doesn't work for me, but I feel like every single person is different and your intercourse with every single person is gonna be different. So one person might really enjoy that and another person might not really get off by that. You definitely have to be talking to your partner and seeing what works for them and also exploring different options. If you haven't tried it, maybe try it and see if it works for you and your partner. And if it doesn't, then you can try different things. For me, scissoring doesn't really work, especially if you're going like this. This way is kind of different, if you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a humping motion and that kind of works better for me. When you actually think of scissoring like this, I've tried it and it's just very difficult and uncomfortable for me and it doesn't really get me off. So I personally don't do that. Wow, we're really getting into the nitty gritty right now. Give us tips, girl. I think my number one tip is literally just communicating with your partner what works for you, even during the act. Obviously the first few times you're gonna be speaking a lot and that might feel not as like sexy, but you can do things in ways that are sexy, like whispering like, hey, can you do this or can you try that? You know, just doing something like that so it just feels a little bit more intimate and not like what you're doing is not working. First time you have sex with somebody, like a new partner, you're gonna be exploring different things and it's not always gonna work well until you guys get to know each other's bodies. So that's my number one tip communication. This says, I'm really scared. Do you have some tips? Tips for your nervousness. I think no matter what, you're going to be nervous with a new partner. I always am because you don't know how it's going to go. You don't know if your guys' connection is going to be good and you just don't know how to make that person pleasured. You don't know what makes that person turned on. We are all unique individuals and there's different things that make us turned on or not turned on. And so it's not a like one size fits all or most, it doesn't. There's there's no way to say like, if you do this step and this step and this step, then it'll be perfect and you won't be nervous. You're gonna be nervous with every single new partner. I think the nervousness does definitely lower the more partners you have. I mean, yeah, that's just how it is. Over time, you will get used to it and you won't be as nervous. But I think there's always gonna be that initial like, Oh, this is something new and it's gonna be different. I think really getting to know somebody before is gonna help you um, not feel as nervous when you go into it because maybe you will already have those conversations. Like, even just having conversations without actually being intimate about intimacy before can help you kind of calm your nerves. As much as, yeah, it can be private, I think if you're potentially, if you're talking to somebody new and it's a potential person that you might get intimate with, I think that's something that you should open up conversation before actually doing it. And that will help you just calm your nerves because you guys have talked about it and you understand each other to an extent before actually doing the deed. Do you have to shave your private parts before having sex? No, you don't have to do anything you don't wanna do. If you don't wanna shave, don't shave. I personally, like to be shaved. There are other people that like having a little hair. Some people like having a full bush. It's up to you how you want your body to be and your partner needs to accept that. Like you can have it however you want. I know personally for me specifically detailed, but I think, you know, let's just talk about it. That's what this video is for. Personally, when I go down on somebody and there's like stubble, it does, it can irritate your mouth. So. Sometimes stubble does irritate your mouth, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on who you are, your skin. Um, and that's something to talk about with your partner. I know, yeah, sometimes stubble hurts my mouth. I don't know if you talk to somebody who has like dated somebody with a beard, <laughs> you hear it a lot that stubble sometimes like it hurts. So I would say 
it's something to talk about with your partner, but you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. If you don't want to shave, don't shave. Is it unsanitary to go down on a girl without her washing her private parts? Again, this is a very intimate and um, personal to question, I guess. Everybody is different and no, it is not unsanitary. I mean, every there's so many things that are unsanitary. Going down on a guy is probably worse than going down on a girl because the girl it's like inside kind of, like nothing's hanging out, you're not touching it. Um, like a guy, like he goes pee, he touches his wiener, who knows if they always wash their hands after, who knows? And then they go and touch this and that and then touch their wiener again and then you're sucking dick. I wouldn't say it's like less sanitary than doing it with a guy that hasn't washed his, his, his dingus. But yeah, it's all personal. If that person ran and worked out all day, they should probably shower before. If they just didn't shower and they've been chilling at home, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's personal and dependent on the person, what they've been doing and how you feel. Like if you're comfortable going down on someone that's a little bit, that hasn't sh showered and, or has. I don't always shower before sex. I, I prefer to be clean and I prefer the other person be clean, but it's not like something that needs to be done right before every single time. How do you finger her though? Do I just keep going in and out or is there some more to do. <laughs> this video is getting actually really, really dirty. <laughs> there's more to it. You don't just like, like there's more to it. First off, you need to be delicate with every single individual because some people, one finger is a lot. Some people, two fingers is a lot. You need to ask your partner what they're comfortable with before you just shove, shove your hands in there. Um, some people don't like fingers going inside them. Sometimes they just want to be rubbed up on the top where the clit is. So you need to talk about that with your partner. And it's not just about going in and out. There's a G spot, which is the, like if I'm laying on my back, it's the top part um, that you'd want to like kind of touch and play with. Um, it's not about going in and out but some people like it going in and out. It's very personal to every single person. So I can't really say for like everybody, but I'm just saying the clit and the G spot are where you want to focus. And if that person likes an in and out sensation, then you, you can talk about that with them. And, and you have to be careful because for some people, one finger is, is enough. And for some people, they want two, three fingers. So you, it's just dependent on the person. And for me personally, in and out was not gonna do nothing for me. You know? Someone says, what does it feel like? You might be a little young to be here talking about this. Um, so I'm just gonna say, if you have not pleasured yourself, you should do that first before even thinking about having sex or being intimate with somebody else. You need to like see how it feels for you and then that's how it feels. Do you have to go down on a girl to call it having sex? Good question, no. Sex is being intimate with somebody and it doesn't necessarily always need to be like an in and out thing where, you know, like we were just talking about where something's going in anywhere. You don't, sex is being intimate with somebody and finding pleasure in that and it can mean different things for different people. So no, you don't have to go down on somebody. You don't have to put your fingers in anybody. Like it's it's dependent on the two of you and what you guys decide to do. So instead, how is it the first time? It's gonna be different for everybody. Some people it's gonna be very comfortable. Some people it's gonna be very uncomfortable. Some people it's gonna be scary. Some people it's gonna be fun. It's dependent on you and your partner. Do it when you're ready and when you feel comfortable with your partner partner. For me, I told you guys in my last video, it was with one of my friends who was open to the idea and wanted to you know, kind of experiment. We were in college and, and it was very comfortable because it was one of my friends. And at, in the beginning, we were a little bit, you know, we we're like, oh my gosh, but it was comfortable because of somebody I talked to about it before and somebody that was open to it and, and was also wanting to try it out. As long as you have the conversation, I think you'll be okay. What all happens during typical lesbian sex? For me, I, I can only talk about my own personal experience. Here's what goes down for me. Foreplay, which is using your fingers. For me personally, this is what I consider foreplay. Using your fingers, humping, like that type of thing. And then stimulating the clitoris and the G spot using oral sex and sometimes using toys. But it can be different for everybody and 
you might have a different experience and still be able to consider that sex because it's different for everyone. Someone said, I don't know, but I feel weird about having sex. Can it be due to fear? Yeah, I mean, I still to this day with certain partners, I feel, I don't wanna say uncomfortable, but I feel like kind of uncomfortable. Like I feel fearful. I feel um, not 100%, I guess. And sex can change for everybody. I know personally, this is like something a little bit deeper than just sex, but for me personally, after after my dad passed away, I had a really hard time being intimate with anybody. And I still, I still do. I still have a, um, like a hard time with it. And I, I don't know why. I heard that this happens for some people when they lose somebody. It's hard for them to be intimate again with, with their partner. For me, sex changes and it's gonna you're gonna you might be fearful it's okay to be fearful and it's okay to to not have sex and it's okay to say i'm not ready for it and it's okay for that to change for one day you to be like i'm good i'm ready and then for the next day you to be like if i'm not good i'm not ready for it so yes it can you can because of fear um it could be because you're not ready do it on your own time do it when you're ready do it when you're not afraid and some people are asexual. You might not even want to have sex. So that's okay too. And if you are trying to get over fear, I would say do it, like try it. If you're like, I'm just a little bit fearful. I just want to try it, then go for it, try it. Was below her mouth an accurate representation? Um, I only, I don't know. I've seen that movie like really, really long time ago. But what I'm gonna say is intercourse is gonna be different for every single person. So yes, that might be an accurate representation for somebody, but it's not gonna be an accurate representation for everybody. Don't hold standards to what you see in movies or in porn or anywhere. It's gonna be different for you. It's not gonna be the exact same way that someone else does it. This one says, I've never had sex with a girl. How do I have to behave? You don't have to be any sort of way. You need to be yourself and you need to be comfortable with your partner. Is there a product to clean your V before having sex? Don't clean your V. Just wash it like you normally do. You don't need a specific product. Your V cleans itself. Like, let's be clear. You don't need to, don't put any, don't go crazy because soap and stuff is chemicals and it, and if someone's gonna eat you out, they're gonna get that in, your, in their mouth. And I don't think soap tastes very good. So clean it like you normally do. You're gonna be okay. You don't need any special products. Yeah, you don't need to douche. That's not good for your vagina. Clean it like you normally do. From the outside, you don't need to do anything inside. Tips for how to seduce a lovely lady so that you can, okay. I think two people, if they wanna have sex, they're gonna just like feel it. They're gonna, they're gonna wanna do it. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to seduce anybody. You don't need to like do any like magical spells on anybody. If you're just trying to like, set the mood, maybe like set some candles out, do some music, I don't know. But you don't need to seduce anybody. I think if they wanna do you, they're gonna do you, you know what I mean? How does it work? I think we've talked about that. How do you bring up the conversation on rougher sex? I love this. Okay, so I'm also gonna answer, how do you bring up conversation just to initiate it in the first place? I think first, the two of you need to be on the same page where you guys are interested in each other, so get to that conversation first. Um, and then a conversation about sex can happen. Maybe just bring up your sexual past. Hey, have you had sex with a girl? Cause I haven't. Or have you had sex with a girl? Because um, I have with one person and this and this and this have happened. Just have like a little normal conversation. And I think naturally in conversation that can be brought up. As far as a conversation on rougher sex, first off, you definitely need to be already having sex with that person. And then just, hey, I, want to try out bondage or I want to try out like you know something light like a light bondage would you be interested in doing that would you feel comfortable doing that maybe we can go to a sex store together and pick out some things or I would love it if you pulled my hair or did this and that or choked me a little bit just saying those things it's it's not something to like have to bring up like hey I want to sit you down and and talk about this no just say hey would you be interested in doing this would you be interested in trying this because it's something that I really wanna try. Don't make it a big deal. Just bring it up casually. How long does lesbian sex last? However long you want it to. Um, there's no like set amount of time that you need to like accomplish. Um, it could be quick if you get off quick and you could just end it there or you can continue on and keep tr keep going for another another round. Or it could be a little bit longer if you take your time. It could be longer if, if you don't get off quick. It can last for hours, it can last for minutes, it can last for 
Yeah. However long. I don't know. It just depends on you and your partner. There's no set time. Do girls actually care about how the punani looks, tastes, and smells? It's all very personal. Like I've been saying this whole video, some people might care. Some people might not. I personally would care if it smelled a certain way, but for the most part, not that I've had sex with like so many people, but for the most part, I feel like they all kind of smell similar and you don't really smell it unless it smells bad. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't really smell like that much. Taste, for the most part, I don't really taste it either. I mean, some people taste a little bit. I don't know, I don't really taste anything either. And looks, they all look different, but they're all like, very similar, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. I don't know, I think everybody's different. It all, everyone's punani is different. Everyone's preferences are different. You might care, you might not care. Your partner might care, your partner might not care. At the end of the day, I think take care of your hygiene and in general, you should be good. And hopefully you pick a partner that also has good hygiene. One thing that I would look out for is how they, you know, do they brush their teeth every day? Do they shower? Unless you don't have good hygiene and you don't care, then whatever. First time, just how to make it not so uncomfortable. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Like I've been saying, talk about it. Have the conversation. Say what you feel. Say what feels good, tell the person. Say what doesn't feel good, tell that person. It's gonna be uncomfortable the first time. How should you do it when it's your first time? I think we kind of covered that. Um, and then it also says, what's your first time story? That is in my last video. So if you guys have not checked it out, go and check it out. All right, we have a few more questions. How are you a lesbian if you've never had sex with a girl? How are you straight if you've never had sex with a boy? That's not what dis distinguishes your sexuality or what you're interested in. Um, you know what, what you were attracted to. And you might be asexual and still be interested in girls and still be a lesbian or still be whatever you are, bi, whatever. You might be asexual. So it, it really has nothing to do with having sex. It has to do with what your heart is attracted to and your mind is attracted to um, in a person. You know, you know what you like. You've known, you've always known. Go with your instincts. I'm attracted to girls and I'm hella gay, but I don't think I would like to go down on a girl. So maybe I'm a bottom. And my answer to this is maybe you are. Maybe you just haven't tried it so you don't know if you like it. You can try it if you want to or you don't have to and you can be a bottom. I think I've said it in my last video. I don't really get the whole bottom top thing. That has only recently come about, like I've only really seen it since TikTok and I've never really encountered that many people in real life that are like a top or a bottom. Most people are just they, they will do both. Before I licked a punani, I was like, oh, look, that sounds real gross. But then you do it and you're like, oh, it's not even gross, what am I talking about? How is your relationship with your friend now after doing it with her? So if you guys have not heard my first time having sex with a girl, it is in my last video, which is linked here. You guys can check it out. I had sex with my friend and we are completely like normal. Like we went right back to how it always has been. We are fine. We're friends to this day. That was like six, six-ish years ago. And we're totally normal. Like we went, we never had sex again because it was just a one-time thing. Like we just wanted to test it out. And that was that, like it was fine. I don't know. This one says, do most lesbians go down on each other? And for any bi girls out there in general, are girls better at it than guys? I can't speak for most lesbians, but what I can say is that for me personally, most girls that I have personally had sex with are not opposed to going down. So do most lesbians go down each other? For me personally, the ones I've encountered have all been fine with that. I can't speak for most most people. Um, and then for bi girls out there in general, are girls better at it than guys? For me personally, girls are better at going down, but it doesn't mean that the sex is better or worse or any of that. It's a separate to each individual person. Um, and I think that, you know, some people might prefer having sex with girls. Some people might prefer having sex with guys. And I, again, you can't, you can't speak generally on this. Like it's dependent on each individual person. Are there any common positions, methods besides oral and fingering? Um, you can do anal there. You can do different positions but I don't know what you mean by it besides oral or fingering. Like you can use a strap on. There's just so many options. There's so many different ways to have sex. 
watch some porn. How do you use what people call protection when it comes to girls in the bedroom? Also, what if it's for your first time and you have no clue if you're a top, bottom, or switch? For protection, there's something called the dental dam, which is like a little sheet that you can put over the vagine and then you can still do some, you know, you do some work down there. And then your next question was, if it's your first time and you have no clue if you're top, bottom, or switch. Okay, so all that means is that if you're a bottom, it just means you don't wanna go down on the other girl or you don't wanna touch the other girl. Don't think about that. I would say just go and try it. Like, you don't need to be a top, bottom, or switch. You, Why don't you just enjoy the moment, you know, Go down on the girl if you want to do that. If you don't want to do that, then you don't have to. Um, and it, it's just experiment. You don't need to be a specific, like, I don't know why we need to put ourselves in a specific category like that. Do what makes you comfortable and then you'll figure it out. Okay, how would you simulate the G-spot without being inside? There's a comment right under that that says impossible and impossible. Stimulating the G-spot is, is not the only way to get off for somebody. I personally don't get off by that. Like it feels good, but I personally will never like get to the, the goal if it's just stimulation from the inside. Stimulating from the outside is where, for me and a lot of people that I know, how they get off. Stimulating the G-spot is not the most important thing for everybody and you there's no way for you to get to it if it's not through the inside. But there's a clit you can simulate that from the outside. What do you like and how do you and your partner decide on who is the pitcher or the receiver? Okay, so I say the person who's initiating the sex probably starts or you talk about it. Maybe you're talking about it and you're like, let's fuck tonight, all right. So you go into the bedroom and whoever's just taking the initiative, whoever's taking the leap, then that's the person that is being the pitcher at the moment and then you just switch off after. It just happens naturally kind of like, whoever's taking initiative. All right, those were all of the questions. This was a long video. There is a lot happening. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions. If you have stories you wanna share, I love reading through stories like, oh, this is my first time and this is what happened and this is how I dealt with it. And I think that'll get the conversation going because it's, it's good to hear other people's stories so that you feel better and more comfortable um, going into it. So I would love if you guys were comfortable, you could share your stories down below. Um, I shared mine. If you guys haven't seen that video, it is right here. And ah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.